Okay, you're back. Don't worry. It's starting now, not to worry. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for those of you who can see me and hear, hi, hi. We're seeing a lot of people already. That's great. If you can see me and hear me and you can see ma'am also, please type yes in the chat box. Uh, that'd be great. And if you could also ensure that in your chat area where you are typing the questions, that the questions have the tab of send to everybody so that we're all able to answer those questions for you in case you have a question. So if you're able to see me and hear me, that's great. Um, my colleague Vaishnavi is online with me as well. Hi, Vaishnavi. Uh, hi. I, hi. So you can you could even, you can hear us and see us. Yes. OK, super. All right, great. So um, Nupur ma'am, there is uh, tend to be a, there does tend to be a slight lag when uh, with the webinar jam chat. So sometimes when we ask a question, it just takes a couple of seconds. Um, so that might be the thing that, that you need to be able to also keep in mind. So sometimes we'll see the yeses coming in a little later. So great. I'm, I'm glad everybody's here. Um, this is an interactive session. Please feel free to be able to ask us questions that you may have related to this very, very exciting domain of work, which is related to animation and design and journalism. And um, we're, we're hoping that we have a really great session for going forward. Um, so um, I'm going to uh, hand over to Vaishnavi for a couple of seconds. Um, Siddharth's audio is not available. So my team, if you're online, good evening, Shweta. If you're online, if you could ask, help people understand how they need to be able to either get audio or video back on. Um, just a quick uh, point before, uh, okay, uh, I, apparently I'm not audible. Uh, all right, so we probably have to have a reconnect. So there could be a signal dip in case there's a signal dip. What tends to happen is the video cuts out, but you'll still be able to hear me. OK, uh, so good to see everyone here. Yeah, if you're facing, as the Pankar has typed, if you're facing an audio video issue, please refresh. Uh, so uh, Vaishnavi, I'm, I'm going to hand over to you for a few seconds so you can. Um, looking forward to talking to you too, Tanya. Uh, look, uh, please go ahead and uh, do the introductions, and then we can take it from there. Right, right. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, webinar. So without any further delay, let me quickly introduce you to our two panel guests here. So we have with us Ms. Um, Nupur Tiwari, a designer by qualification with an expertise in TV production, non-fiction, experimental films. Nupur is a film and video communication designer who has worked with the niche television channels like National Geographic Channel and has also produced various health lifestyle shows as part of the features CNN, IBN. Um, she has, um, so she is currently working as an associate uh, professor and head of the Jagran School of Visual Art and Design and teaching graduate and undergraduate uh, students. Um, she is an alumni of National Institute of Fashion Technology. Um, sorry, she is an alumni of National Institute of Design and has over 15 years of work experience. Um, we welcome you, ma'am. And the second speaker we have is um, Ms. Shilpa Singh, a coach with a flair for humor and storytelling. Shilpa is an instant hit amongst the um, amongst hundreds of students. She passionately delivers career workshops to packing over 22 years of incredible work experience in career guidance, life coaching, HR management, and teacher training. Shilpa brings a holistic view of the entire education and skill building spectrum from schools to organizations. Her youthful energy and bubbling enthusiasm is highly infectious and makes learning a fun end of Um Welcome you both. Over to you, uh, Shilpa. Let's start off with uh, today's webinar. If, if you want, I can just share my screen. Um, actually, yeah, hang on. If, uh, if you could, uh, that would be great. So, just um, allow me a minute. I'll just yeah, certainly, certainly, certainly. Thank you. All right. So um, good evening, everybody. We've got Nupur Ma'am here. And I think that's a lot of rich experience she brings. So please make sure that you're asking questions that will help you understand what uh, the nitty gritty of both design as well as being able to create uh, movies and create uh, uh, create art is like. And you'll be able to get some really great insights. Um, and we're very excited to have her here. Uh, and and when, when we were talking about these three uh areas and we were talking about these three areas of work i think that was very important for us to be able to try and understand what ties them all together for one um and also to be able to see what is it that each one of these means and what it is that when it comes to understanding what we need to do to study uh so uh, just as soon as my presentation comes up so when i 
when I say the word design, or um, if I specifically say the word design, um, there is a there's a certain amount of association that comes with that. Uh, a lot of times, the association is related to drawing something, or uh, you know, fashion design, or uh, somebody who's very creative, and that's the kind of words that we will associate with design. Uh, but design and and including and including elements like animation uh, are are far far more than that, and there is just so much more to it than just just being able to draw well. Um, so I want to be able to show that for you. Um, so Vaishnavi, uh, will we be able to see the presentation? Yes, I'm I, just uh, there's some technical thing. I'm just uh, give me yeah. two minutes. Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, what we're trying to be able to do when we look at talking to talking about design specifically. Um, and, and I want to be able to speak to you about that. So all of you are either at a laptop or at a phone right now. And uh, we are very used to using our keyboard, especially the one that is on our laptops or our phones. And we type that, uh, or we type on that now very quickly. Earlier, it used to be where, you know, it used to be, you had to press buttons a number of times to get a letter. Oh, and I'm at, yeah, so I'm, I'm actually dating myself when in order to be able to say B, we had to type, type a key twice. But now uh, you have a QWERTY keyboard. And, um, the QWERTY keyboard is the norm across the world. Everybody uses the QWERTY keyboard. But I'm not sure how many of you know that the QWERTY keyboard design is actually 140 years old. Um, and so when it comes to good design, it's something that lasts a long time. Now, there is, of course, a lot of debate about whether the QWERTY keyboard is the most effective design and could there be a better design and a whole bunch of other things associated to it as to why is it that uh, that design has uh, has uh, has lasted this long. So Sejil, you say that you draw, and there are a lot of options that will come there. So we're going to talk about those specifically. So we're going to cover that for you. So the QWERTY keyboard has lasted 140 years, um, which comes and begs to the simple question that what does design do? What does really, really good design do? Um, so design, animation, journalism, the three things, why would they be put together? Design, in its essence, solves mm -hmm. problems. Any good design solves a problem. Now, whether it is a design that is uh, for a garment or it is a design for um, a, a laptop or a pen or a product, design solves problems of everyday people. And that's where good design comes from, right? So uh, yeah, so Nupur will be able to help me understand that as well a little later as we go forward. So when we look at design and we look at looking at design, uh, there are many elements within design that come. and. Um, a lot of our association, unfortunately, ends up becoming only two limited areas of design, like, say, fashion or even interior. I'm seeing that go past a lot in the chat box. So we think of only limited things. But design is not just not just that. It's design is products. Design is um, leather. It's apparel. It's jewelry. It's, it's everything. There's so many things. Every single thing you own has been designed by someone. And thought went into it. Yeah. Um, so it's important for you to remember that design is that element. Now, one of the key areas and one specific area within design that comes in that we're going to focus on today is animation. Um, and animation is something that we all get very excited about. I mean, I love watching uh, an animation movie. Um, and to animate, in essence, is to bring to life. Um, that is what it means. And so your Kung Fu Panda, your um, your um, Thomas the Engine, or when we used to watch, I used to watch Naughty and Tom and Jerry and all of that, it's all animation, it's all bringing something to life. Now let's go and talk about journalism. So journalism is about connecting with people and uh, being able to get a story out, being able to get a viewpoint out. Why would these three things be put together? And the important thing that we want to be able to recover then therefore an understanding of why these, these things get put together is the commonality between design, animation, and so, um, OK, so I'm glad the, 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 the presentation is working because I wanted to be able to uh, show this. So if you could just move to the next slide, and I'll see if I can move it. No, I can't move it. OK, uh, so this is uh, an idea of design here, uh, which is uh, a design based on an organization that is known as the hipporoller.org. So hipporoller does what? Hipporoller helps people in uh, impoverished countries where there is a water shortage to be able to carry water long distances. Um, it can carry up to 90 liters of water at one time. So instead of being able to carry something on their head where there are a lot of people who are not going to be able to get water, design helps you solve that problem, right? So that's what it does. Um, all right, we can go ahead and click forward. 
<clears throat> so the hippo roller project was basically designed to be able to solve the problem of water shortage or how to be able to get water from long distances so this is what we were talking about <clears throat> when we came to talking about design solving a problem this is one type of design and usually we don't even think about something like this um and when we think about design we don't think about that element there all right and let's uh, go ahead and move forward i've got because i've got a screen share happening so animate is to bring to life and now uh, when we look at the journalism element and how getting the right story across happens um and in animation uh, the one thing that you need to be able to remember that connects the three that i was coming to is the power of observation um you need to be able to observe keenly in all three fields so whether you're designing a product you need to be able to see the problem whether you're designing um a bottle or a, a hair clip or a or a fan or a light you need to answer what is it that is there you need to be able to look at the world around you that way in animation observation becomes very critical because if you don't create an a uh, character that blinks which is something we don't even think about then suddenly this is like this really weird zombie looking character that exists so you need to be able to have very minute observation detail of what does it look like which is why some of the animation now is mind boggling how real it looks and of course in journalism the most critical element that comes forward is the power of observation looking at the world around you looking at what's going right what's going wrong and being able to have the responsibility and carry the responsibility forward of answering um and giving questions and raise the asking the right questions and giving the right answers to the people um so when we looking at these three elements the reason they're all together is because there is the power of observation that is connecting them all all right um and that was kind of the what what i wanted to be able to mention to each one of you so remember whether you want a career in design you want to get into animation you wanted to get into graphics you want to get into journalism you have to build on your power of observation as you go forward because that is going to be one of your most critical elements for success in these areas if you know um if, if when you want to go forward so um atin i hope uh, you are able to now hear us if you could take on take over from me that would be great yes ma'am i'll ah. just uh, okay great. <laughs> good evening everyone good evening ma'am so the uh, like you've just uh, seen all right so we have uh, ma'am you took us through all of this uh, what i wanted to get through was uh, what are the like you very uh, nicely explained what are the differences in these particular and uh, i'm just going to take you through what exactly uh, we feel like uh, what what the world of design today talks about what the world of animation today looks like and how are they somehow interrelated with uh, journalism and you we also know that journalism happens to be one of its own streams right so when we talk about design it's not the first thing when i say or ask somebody uh, uh, listen i think a career in fine arts or a career in design uh, is something that you should look at the first thing that most people come up with tell me sir but mai fashion mein nahi jana chahta you know so that's the thing like when we talk about design it's not just about fashion it's not just about clothing there are so many things the most one of the most popular things today i feel is uh, graphic designing or ui ux development where people are designing websites people are designing uh, uh, mobile phone applications for that matter game designers right so many children i'm sure here are playing pubg are playing free fire are playing uh, i don't know the third third game over there so fortnite have, fortnite everyone's playing fortnite fortnite, fortnite, <laughs> fortnite thank you so much right so there's so many game developers out there and not just developers there's game developers who are with the computer aspect of it there are game designers there are automobile designers there um, there there are clothes designers building interior designers another uh, misconception that i see so many places sir interior designing ke liye to architecture padhna padega matlab you know so there are so many uh, things which uh, that's not true you don't need architecture to study interior designing so there's apparel designing there is uh, jewelry designing there's textile designing garment designing also which you know the uh, common thing uh, that people occur to them is that's what so when we look at what you need to become uh, or what are what are colleges looking for when we talk about students applying for the design course you basically need to have a creative outlook right the creative aptitude which is tested by the design aptitude test and then there are innovative connections between uh, shapes and sizes and your spatial aptitude how do you visualize how do you imagine things so on and then where do you get placed the most common question from all the parents sir is it a lucrative career sir will my child is it like a professional degree or is it a degree course or will my child be able to even get into some industry 
So there are so many places where you can get hired. There are media houses, automobile industries, any places, right? So many digital companies who are taking you through uh, when we talk about design. Now, when we talk about design, like I said in the beginning, there are so many factors to it. There's graphic designing, like I what we spoke about. There's animation and VFX, what Shilpa Ma'am had uh, was just talking about. Uh, there are cartoonists. There are uh, Hollywood. Yes, has reached some level of animation where CGI combined with animations combined with VFX, everything comes together to build like a movie, like a Lion King that they've released today. Right. Similarly, there's so much scope, like you can see in India, which the course may have for us for our industry, for our local industries. Then there's textile designing, leather designing, depending on the geography, depending on where the companies are or the industries are established. There are so many different forms of design which we can look at, right? Other over and above fashion, something like an accessory design or a product design gets you into multiple fields again. It's not just about uh, like when we talk about car designing or automobile designing, it's not just about uh, one car, right? You can start a, a, a company where you're dealing with multiple partners and trying on automobiles that way, right? So that's one other form of design where we can look at. And other than that, there are the conventional forms, the conventional uh, courses that people have been uh, coming up with, like textile designing, fashion designing. Then there's something called fashion technology. So uh, where you need different combinations of subjects or different interest levels, the various other forms where we are able to categorize design over and above fashion. When we talk about animation, thanks, ma'am. Uh, Shilpa, you taking care of that. Uh, so when we talk about animation again, all right, we talk about something where you need to have an artistic bent of mind. Sure, yes, you know, you have to be creative. You have to be uh, a little artistic, but over and above, how tech savvy are you? How well are you adapted to the softwares, to the tools that are being used in today's time? And how soon are you able to clear your certifications or get your hands on or your skill that is workable enough for an industry that's thriving today. So when we talk about jobs after doing your animation courses, there are obviously there's the film industry, which you can uh, sign up with. There are different uh, web houses. There are different IT companies which are specialized in this particular uh, clientele who are dealing with animators and visual effects designers, right? Multinational companies, design firms, most companies, most industries in this line of work will be looking for somebody who's good, not just with the degree, but also with the kind of work that they've done throughout their studies, throughout their internships, work experiences, different kind of forms. Then a little bit about journalism, like ma'am has uh, told us here, says journalism is not uh, just about reporting. It's not uh, just Arnab Goswami. Journalism is everything that goes in from research, from uh, adapting to uh, the kind of environment that you're doing, you're reporting in, uh, the kind of work that you've been doing since so long. There are so many web series today, I think, that are so relevant to the kind of work that journalists have been putting in. And the kind of uh, work that like when somebody asks, you can be an editor, you can become an anchor, reporter, uh, crime journalist, so on. So there's abundance of fields where journalism in itself as a career has been prevailing. And there are various courses which can directly get you into uh, things like that. So when we talk about journalism, like I said, there's anchoring, there's sports journalism, broadcast journalism, public relations, where you take care of the image that your client has built over a time. You are in constant touch with journalists, with people, and you know, the sole responsibility of your job is corresponding with different people to make sure that the client is always right, always in sight of everybody, of their customers. What are the different courses that you can look at? When we talk about design, uh, there can be there are universities which have four year courses, bachelors of design. There are some which even do a BSc in design uh, for three years. There is an integrated course that's BDES plus masters of design MDES. That's a dual degree. When we talk about anima animation, you can have BSc animation, you can have a BA animation. Uh, similarly, when we talk about journalism, uh, most colleges you will see that the degree is a uh, is a, a combined degree of bachelors of journalism and mass communication. But uh, also other than that, like I was uh, discussing this morning only, you can also have something like a, a, a degree in mass communication or a general degree in mass media and go on to do your master's in journalism as a specialization, right? So there is a different courses that you can look at when we talk about these three careers in particular. 
different kind of institutes that are there so when we talk about design and animation uh these are there's so many institutes like there's iits for engineering there's government institutes like uh nids for design then there's uh, other institutes like jagran we have here there's uh, srishti there is uh karnavati so many different institutes spread all across the country which we can target when we're looking for a career in specifically in design or in animation right most of these courses or most of these institutes that i that you can see here uh I'll, if it's the last one is not i think it's pretty visible so if you can see all these there's a mostly colleges which cater to the bachelor degrees in these particular courses similarly when we talk about journalism these are some colleges which have been prominent which have uh, delivered the kind of courses the kind of uh, performance that they promise and they've been there for quite some time in uh, in the education sector and uh, they spread all across the country again not uh, specific to any particular geography and then most of these colleges all of these colleges for that matter provide a bachelor's degree in journalism uh okay now a couple of things when we look at design uh, all right so when we look at design as a course most of the colleges would be taking an entrance exam right most colleges would be looking at how creative you are your creative aptitude your spatial aptitude logical ability and different factors or and the general uh, uh, you know the general quantitative ability verbal ability and the kind of specific industry knowledge that you're supposed to have when we are talking about uh, because design animation they happen to be skill based careers so most colleges will ask you for uh, a entrance examination especially colleges offering degrees like the bachelor's of design the bdes however when we talk about uh, certain colleges which uh, which have a bsc in design or a ba in design very few of them but only probably like 1% 10% colleges where you will find something like a merit based situation otherwise 95% 98% colleges design colleges offering in india they ask for an entrance exam based on these factors that you can see here journalism again journalism happens to be divided some colleges will ask for a merit based exam and uh, entrance process most colleges for that matter affiliated with universities will ask you uh, you know uh, government universities would ask you to have uh, state or, or rather ask you to have a merit based entrance however there are few colleges in uh, delhi university in uh, some private universities offering a pgmc course or a uh, would ask you to take an entrance exam as well some colleges just have their regular uh, colleges like christ and bises would have their own entrance examinations i'm sure jlu uh, and colleges like uh, the, the, uh, some colleges of delhi university itself they have their own entrance examinations and the things asked are very generic in nature they're not very specific about uh a particular industry the most the verbal ability skills logical reasoning general knowledge about what's going on in the industry so on and so forth right that's about it from my side uh, shilpa ma'am uh, is there anything else you wanted to add no um i think you covered a lot of that you covered the nuts and bolts of it and the, and the nitty gritty of it pretty well and important like i'm seeing a lot of uh, questions um that are coming in as to what are the qualities that are required and i think uh, nupur ma'am will be able to help answer those a little bit better as well for both design animation journalism because she'll be able to bring the holistic viewpoint from what the creative careers require so we'd be waiting for input from you on that as well um so yeah that's that's uh, that's what i wanted to cover uh, primarily uh so important for everyone to be able to at least from my perspective as i tell all students is please definitely work on communication skills that's going to be an important thing for you to do um so uh, yeah over to you nupur whatever you would like to be able to uh, share with us now we'd be happy to then we'll have some questions uh that we are seeing also and that we have to we would like to ask you as well so to help right um so can i have uh, my presentation yeah i'm not just to see it. uh atin uh, yes ma'am have... i'm just on yeah, yeah. So, so like get... um you had a very relevant question why did we put uh you know um film design animation all in a journalism school um so i would like to answer that that you know as we know that technology design creativity these are the forces which are going to drive the future of tomorrow um so we we were looking at you know which they, they will be driving innovation and development within the country 
So that's why uh, we put in uh, all of these together and we called it the Faculty of Journalism and Creative uh, Studies nice. um, as, as it's become the pillars of the future. Um, that That is one. Uh, then I would like to uh, give you a little introduction of my university, uh, Jagran Lake City University. Um, so if I can have the presentation. Just getting that set up for you, yes. Just one second. So this, I, because of the tech lag, so that happens. Um, it's already yeah. uploaded. Uh, it, it's just taking a little while to. Yeah, we uh, everywhere yeah. networks have become an issue. So uh, yeah. we're just. I know. Just heard the the loudest thunderstorm here in yes. Dubai. Yes, we're we're actually holding on and hoping that you stay connected and you don't get disconnected yeah. at any point. So that's what we're hoping for. So. Um, Okay, uh, I think in, while we're waiting for the presentation, we could probably, questions maybe. yeah, we can just ask some of the questions that could uh, come up. Uh, so there are, I, you've had experience working uh, for channels, etc. There was somebody who was asking uh, what, what kind of qualities are required to be an anchor or to be able to get in front of the camera. So if you could just share some of those insights and then we we'll, we can ask you some of the other questions that we also want to be able to uh, ma'am we have the ppt on so okay but let her let her ask this. let her answer the anchor question and then we okay. get the ppt right. going in the background right. ppt on kar do tab tak. so uh, to be no. an anchor i think uh, the most important quality is to be in the present and you have to be extremely quick uh, you know with your thinking and whatever whatever is going on then you have to have a a solid screen presence um, so how you look, how you um, are in front of the camera is also very important. Your diction, um, the kind of poise you have in front of the camera, all of those things are very important. Quick thinking is something that I always think is very, very important because when you're doing chat shows, when you're talking, uh, you know, when, when you're giving bits of news, um, it's, it's very important to be, uh, you know, connected and it's very important to be actually, um, you have to read through everything. It's not just... Uh, it's not just something that you read on the teleprompter. You have to actually understand and assimilate that news when you actually present it. So those are the things which are very important, I think, as a presenter. Uh, and I was working for National Geographic. It was more of like television production. So I did a couple of anchoring uh, pieces, but it was more of like production that I was working on. So that has a different set of skills um, mm -hmm. but as an anchor. Um, it, it just helps to be, uh, you know, more camera genic, more camera friendly, more comfortable in front of the camera. A lot of people are otherwise extremely amazing speakers and they're very good. Uh, but the moment the camera is switched on, <laughs> everything completely goes for the ride. So um, that's why it's it's very important to, to, to have all of those uh, skills in you. Wonderful. That's really good input. Uh, before you begin your presentation, please may I request everyone when they're marking their questions, mark them to send to everybody, please. Uh, because what's happening is the chat's moving very fast. So when you mark it as a private question to either Atin or I, what happens is we're not being able to catch the question fast enough and we're not being able to answer that for you. I'd like you to be able to get an answer for your question. So please mark your question sent to everybody. All right. Great. Uh, sorry. Back to you. Um, so I'm just going to give you a little, uh, you know, uh, lowdown on the university. So JLU is a world-class teaching and research institution situated in the heart of central India. It is one of the fastest growing and most awarded university of central India. Uh, we're offering about 56 degree programs uh, and we have about 2,500 plus students on campus. Uh, and we have 27 international partnerships. Uh, if I can move on to the next slide, please. Yeah, so we have 27 international university and organizations as our knowledge and academic partners. Uh, we have 2,500 students on campus and we're offering 45 plus professional degree programs in UG, PG and research level. Uh, please go to the next slide. And our vision is igniting minds and changing lives. And uh, looking at the same vision, uh, we if we can go to the next slide. So we started, sorry, we started the Faculty of Journalism and Creative Studies, which has two schools, which is Jargon School of Journalism and Communication and Jargon School of Visual Arts and Design. Um, because we believe that tech, design, communication, and creativity are the pillars of the future, and they will drive innovation within the country and create change makers. 
Um, very this, interesting to put them all together. It's very, very, very nice. Yes. So this is um, these are this is like a we have a two thousand uh, twenty thousand square foot of studio space where we have uh, television studios, uh, audio visual labs, uh, broadcasting and recording rooms, uh, which are very essential uh, because we offer uh, practice based and uh, you know uh, uh, learning uh, within uh, Central India. Also, uh, we have a very um, futuristic industry-led and industry-relevant curriculum. And our students basically practice in these labs and they create their portfolio, which is very, very important when they look for jobs. Uh, if I can have the next slide, please. Um, the Jagran School of Journalism and Communication was also awarded as the best emerging media school in India. Uh, and we got the Entertainment Award in 2015-16. And uh, we're offering, um, you know, courses in BFA filmmaking, animation, and VFX, um, and BDES program in user experience design. Now, user experience design is a fairly new field of design, um, and we've partnered up with Imagine XP, which is one of the leading UX design and design thinking certification organization. Um, and we're offering uh, this uh, program in UX design, which basically is the process of creating digital products with many meaningful experiences. So whether it's an app, whether it's a website, whether it's systems that you create, um, all of them has some kind of a UX component. So we're going to be teaching that in the four-year program, which uh, is BDES in user experience. And then there's a two-year, uh, which is an uh, MDES in user experience. Um, the USP of these programs, are these, these are extremely industry-led programs. And uh, our students get to do a really long internship, and they probably get placed most of the times uh, in the industry. They get absorbed in the industry as they're doing their internships. Um, so it is, uh, you know, we have partnered with Imagine XP, uh, XP and we are offering these programs. Uh, then we also have the PG Diploma in Animation, uh, the MPhil, which is for one year, and PhD, which is for three years. Um, BFA Filmmaking Animation. And VFX is also a, a program which is uh, something which has a lot of potential, you know. So students who want to do filmmaking, who want to learn VFX, uh, want to get into spaces where, you know, there are production houses or there's, you know, animation studios, uh, they can take up these courses. Um, and we have, uh, we also have like very, uh, you know, Cutting edge studios uh, where we teach these programs, um, and uh, we we have a tie up with Azure Cloud, so uh, all our programs you know use Adobe Creative Cloud, um, and uh, our students are able to use that within the campus. It's actually nice. Yeah. Next slide. Yes. Um, these are some of the courses in the journalism space. Uh, we have a BA journalism and mass comm program for three years. Uh, we have a BA Hindi Journalism uh, and a MA two years, which is MA Advertising and PR, uh, which is for two years, and also MBA in Digital Marketing, which is a new program that we have introduced, and a PG Diploma in Arts and Lifestyle Journalism. Now, we have a lot of uh, you know tie-ups uh, from foreign universities. So we have about 27 international partners, which are, you know, our uh, university and academic partners. And, uh, uh, you know, we have uh, faculty from UAL, uh, from University of Lincoln. Some of, uh, you know, the, the, the faculty there are BAFTA winners who are actually delivering lectures and taking classes for our students. Uh, we also have a summer school, which, you know, the students can actually do a semester in one of these uh, partner universities. And uh, we also have live classrooms where we have a tie up with one of the universities and we have a collaboration and we do classes together. So um, we have a little I have a little AV on the infrastructure because a lot of people have been asking about the infrastructure in the university. Uh, so it's a little testimonial and an infrastructure AV if uh, you can play that for me. Sure. So these are academic partnerships, placements, uh, and internships. Uh, so this is for the journalism school. Um, so our students were placed in Ogilvy, CNN, IBN, TV18, Archduck, um, Hindustan Thompson, DD Post, all of these. 
Um, and we have the EV after the end of this. Yes, if you can hear this. It's, is there a play button or if there isn't, then um, we'll do it some other time. <laughs> no, no, there should be a way for us to do it. Otherwise, um, I guess you could share your screen, play it on your video, on your laptop, and share your screen. And then that's the other way to do it. Yeah, I can, I can do that. I think because there might be some because it, it becomes a heavy file when it's a when it's a AV file, it ends up becoming sometimes heavy. The system might not be able to pick it up, but the sharing screen might work. Okay. <clears throat> uh, while we're waiting to do that, please uh, mark your questions sent to everybody. I'm getting a lot of seeing a lot of the private questions pop up, and I'm not being able to answer all of them because they go by very quickly. So please mark your questions, answer to everybody, uh, answer sent to everybody. So uh, Guneet and Meg Meghna, you've just posted questions. Please go ahead and mark them to everyone so that the team can answer for you. And uh, Guneet, I'll answer your question only for you. Yes, you can do journalism after history. Meghna, you need a longer answer. So please go ahead and put that in. Um, Atin, can I share my screen? If uh, Yes, ma'am. Uh, Okay. You can do that on the top. You can see a button. Just... Clara, try. Clara, try uh, reconnecting, please. Uh, what's happened? Oh, inception has happened. Okay. <laughs> inception okay. moment happens. It always no, happens no. when you're trying to share the screen. Okay, let me just try again. I would like you uh, when we're done. Now we... there is. Um... Yeah. One sec, I can go here. Application window. It goes to my entire screen. Share entire screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Many versions of it. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. Uh, there you go. There you go. You're good. You're good. One second. Let me just close this. And Beautiful. I don't want you to see my desktop, but yeah. Okay. Can I can I play this? Yes. Okay. Please do. Infrastructure that we're sitting at. If you shoot this out and just put this as a social media post, people would think you're somewhere in an international airport. So, infrastructure is the thing which lured me a lot. We have the pyramid in here, we have the most lavish sort of infrastructure in here, which gives our university an international look. Over the years, I have quite developed the buildings here today, and there's no other such media labs I've seen so far. So infrastructure is really nice and it's quite uh, impressive. Everything from like campus is having everything from a swimming pool to a fully equipped library. And uh, as, as we know that uh, library is the cornerstone of every education system. I think it's wonderful. I mean, when I get inside the campus, I do not feel anymore that I'm part of this city, in this country anymore. You, you can see the labs around. At the same time, when it comes to labs, we have today excellent facilities when it comes to editing labs and media labs, like uh, for example, the print lab. So whatever the student works, he or she can see it from this institute or any other institute or any office when you're about during their course. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, super. No, that, that that looks very impressive. We do have some questions that we'd like to be able to ask you. So um, you were mentioning about international collaborations and that there were a lot of international collaborations. So I think I think that was one of the questions that we did have for ma'am for her to be able to just yes. kind of um, so, expand. So please go ahead. Uh, ma'am, I uh, I just had this. I had a couple of questions. Right? So one of them, like ma'am mentioned, I wanted to ask you if there are any international collaborations, international as in like any uh, schools abroad or outside uh, in any country that uh, JLU is associated with in terms of design or journalism or something. Yeah. So uh, UAL is our partner uh, institution. Also, University of Lincoln, University of Sheffield, Harlem. Uh, we have also uh, you know tied up with uh, you know uh, cambridge so some of the some of the institutions are there which uh, offer courses uh, we also have a summer school so some of our students uh, especially the journalism students have gone to ual to do a summer school 
uh, in advertising and the PR space, uh, where they do a, uh, you know, a semester there, and uh, then they come back here, um, or sometimes they do a smaller summer school as well. So, so JLU assists these students to get these kind of summer school internships or um you know those extended programs over yes. there oh, yes we do that we do that um they okay are so they don't have to yeah um, right, and we, right. we also have uh you know now we're gonna have courses which are going to be you know uh some semesters in the university and then some semesters abroad so we have a tie up like that that was one of the most pressing questions. Other than that, when you played this infrastructure video, so that just had me clicking. The entire university infrastructure, that's really wonderful. I mean, um, mind blowing. Uh, but what I also had in mind that when we talk about courses like animation, VFX, journalism, do we have the infrastructure provided for the students in the university where they can advance their practical understanding of the subjects that they're studying? Definitely. So we have, uh, we have like a 20,000 square foot of studio space, like I said. Uh, wherein we have the audio visual studios wherein right. uh, you know you have a big studio floor and i think one of the biggest green screens available in madhya pradesh so you can actually shoot uh, an entire film uh, or an animation whatever that you want to do utilize right. that green screen um that is that is just the video production part of it then we have the editing labs uh, which are using macintosh systems and we also have the azure tie up like i said so you know all the cloud softwares uh, which animators need are all available on Azure and the students can use that. Uh, we also have a, a, a design lab or a print media lab. So right. you know, if, if you want to create, say, logos or brochures or any kind of design elements that you want to do. So we have, uh, you know, InDesign and other softwares, Illustrator, all of those running in those labs, which students can use. Um, so that's something. Also, we have the audio production labs, which is uh, the state of the art labs where you can record VOs and jingles. And uh, we also have our own IP radio station. So we have these amazing student driven outlets uh, like the IP radio, then Lake City Live, which is a broadcasting channel. Uh, then we also have a magazine, uh, which is Lake City Bus. So we have all of these three different outlets where people can showcase their work. and. Um, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, that's actually interesting. So when we talk about showcasing, um, so yes, sure, like magazine and everything. But what about any platforms or, or like events or festivals? Because journalism, I'm guessing media, journalism, uh, graphic designing and all of those things, they might be requiring some kind of uh, uh, like a bigger platform where students from other universities can interact with your university. Any festivals that we have? Yes, yes. For that? Uh, we have um, we have something which is called the Master Clicks, which is one of our uh, key festivals. You know, festival uh, of photography, basically. So okay. um, this this is what we do on every World Photography Day, where we have a big exhibition, uh, and we have different themes uh, from around the world, and then the students from the world over they participate, um, and we, we hold a virtual exhibition as well for this. Um, so that's master clicks. Then we also have a uh, JLU festival of media where we invite speakers from around uh, India and uh, we give them uh, some key issues and they speak on that. Um, and we also have presentations. We have some mentors uh, from, you know, the different industries, ad, PR, design, and they all come in and they, uh, you know, collaborate and they speak to our students. So we have JLU festival of media. Um, we also have uh, something which we've started, which is called Design Confluence. Uh, we're going to okay. have, uh, you know, some uh, amazing designers coming in, showcasing their work. We're going to be talking about design, the different key issues related to design. Um, then we have, like I said, we have student-led platforms, which is Lake City Live, Lake City News, Lake City uh, Voice. And uh, these are uh, very important for the students to showcase their work as well. Um, then our students also go to like different national and international festivals. So we went to Goa uh, Festival, Goa Advertising Festival last time. Um, then, um, you know, we take them to stuff like Design Yatra, NASCOM. Um, these are the key festivals which we uh, encourage the students to participate in. Um, and the, the various design summits like Pune Design Festival, etc. Uh, around the country. Wow, nice. So a lot of industry connect is happening, a lot of very practical input that's yeah. taking place with mentors and, and, and all of those elements. That's great. Um, 
I'm glad because I think uh, when everybody got to hear about what all you're doing, I saw a lot of questions asking about how they could uh, get into Jagran, and so that was a good thing. So there are a lot of questions of where we're getting questions. On I how even they could had get a question about photography. I, I hope that ma'am has answered that uh, thing about photography. Also, somebody was asking. So uh, since Shilpa ma'am, you mentioned this, uh, no problem. What like what are we looking at? Student who is applying for a design or an animation course at the university, like any particular. Uh, skill set or is like there anything you, there? Like, like you mentioned, creative aptitude is very, very important. Um, so we look for, uh, you know, observational skills, how observant are the children, how detail oriented they are and how out of the box they can really think. Mm. Um, so uh, normally we, we that? gauge that uh, through interviews and through interactions okay. with them. Sometimes they bring to us their portfolios, whatever they've done. And uh, we sort of see those portfolios, give them feedback. Um, and, and we, uh, you know, uh, assess that. Um, so um, something that we always encourage is, is creative mentoring for our students. Um, so we like students who are creatively mentored and not creatively coached. Um, so uh, we, we provide that to our students as well. So um, some of the students really benefit uh, from, you know, certificate programs, et cetera, that we offer within the university also. So suppose we, we've had a student uh, who are lacking in certain skills, then we try to get them to do other things to be able to, you know, give them a holistic uh, learning within that space. All right. Super. Like right now we are having a screenwriting <clears throat> course, which is going to the certification course. So a lot of students who are interested in animation in VFX space, they're doing a screenwriting course from us, uh, and a film course, and a film appreciation course, all of those. So a lot of complementary courses that would be there. So if I'm doing animation, then screenwriting uh, is happening because I may want to make a movie at some point in time. So I should understand the nitty gritty. So a lot of complementary courses and supplementary courses that will help in that have, way. We have a center for professional skills also. So mm -hmm. suppose you know, uh, you know students are lacking the kind of soft skills and um, they want that input. So we have that as well, which we offer within Jagran. OK, wonderful. So a lot of overall development that's taking place. That's that's wonderful. Um, you mentioned portfolio, and I saw a lot of questions fly past on what the portfolio requires. So if you could give a little bit of an idea as to what what does what does it mean to have a portfolio? Is it important to have one? Um, and what what does it mean only that I need to have just my drawing in it, or what does it really mean to have a portfolio? So for all the students who are asking about portfolio, please pay attention now for sure. This is the important part. So portfolio is like your passport to the world. Uh, whatever you've done, it's like a showcase of your entire work to the industry. Um, whatever are your relevant skills, whatever um, academic and non-academic skills that you have, you present that to your future employers um, and wherever you're going for internships as well. We have, I forgot to mention that we have an amazing theater space within the studios where uh, you, know, you can showcase your work. So if you've done films, if you've done... Uh, you know, AVs, if you've, if you've made animations, if you've done some kind of designing, uh, then we have these, uh, you know, portfolio uh, evaluation sessions where they present their entire portfolio and you have industry experts, you have faculty, all of them sit down and give them feedback. Uh, and we have a portfolio evaluation on a very, uh, you know, academic level uh, for that matter. So nice. portfolio is very, very important. Uh, in, within your portfolio, you can have, uh, you know, academic work, uh, the, the, the work that you do within the college space, uh, and also non-academic work. So any of the student-led uh, outlets that you have, you know, within GLU, uh, you could do work from there and then put that as a part of the portfolio and you can get graded for that as well. Okay. Um, also, any kind of internships, any design internships that you've done, any freelance work that you've done, um, any other uh, skill set that you have, you know, so a lot of our kids, you know, are bloggers or they're, uh, you know, doing amazing stuff in the photography space. Um, and that's on their own. They're doing that. Sometimes they're doing it through the academic work. Sometimes it's non-academic. So we assess all of that. So it's like a very holistic evaluation of, uh, uh, you know, the person. Yeah. Wonderful. So, but is the portfolio, sorry, Atin, just, just to clarify, is the portfolio required for admission into, into GLU? Like as a design no, student, no. do I need uh, to bring a portfolio? It'll be it'll be helpful if you bring a portfolio and we have a discussion around it. But mm -hmm. even if you don't have a portfolio and if you do have the necessary design 
you know, observation skills. And if we think you think out of the box, if you're able to crack the interview, uh, then we pretty much take uh, the students in. So in the portfolio that a student would need to bring, so they could bring their drawings, their paintings. Can they bring things like their music they've created or their poetry everything, or everything? everything. OK, yeah. super. So if you've taken a coding class and if you if if you could you know created a code for it or uh, if you if you made an app or something get that in too so anything futuristic anything that you want to show the faculty everything's welcome superb so a huge platform then to be able to showcase my skill in case i want to be able to apply and all of that so my portfolio can therefore have all my creative work in any way i can okay wonderful that's great that's really good to know so i hope that helps students as well to understand that the portfolio is a good to have for, for JLU, uh, but it's not a necessity. But if you have it, it's going to obviously help be able to talk about things more. In we're going well. to focus on building the portfolio once you're in the campus. So once okay. you are a student, then we really focus on your portfolio. So we, hmm. we know that it's mentored uh, you know, through the industry experts. And we all sit down and mentor every child to produce industry relevant work. Um, but it's not a prerequisite to, you know, come into the college. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Um, I'm getting a lot of questions of, of how do we apply and whatnot. So that that's also coming through. So, yeah. So is there, yeah. Is, what, yeah, so the application process, if you could just touch on that. And I think we have a couple of, we, we might have another question, I think, that, that was floating back. But yeah, if you could just throw any light on the application process. You and can go to the website and uh, you will find a registration form there. So if you fill in the form uh, and the, you know, uh, the, the area that you're interested in, then you will get a call back from the admissions team and uh, they will guide you to the right departments and everything because we have a lot of schools within uh, the university. So whatever are your key interests, they'll, um, they'll help you with that. Um, and then once you're through with that, then you'll be sent for an interview. Um, and if you have an entrance test for that a particular school, it's different. Otherwise, you'll be given uh, you know, a call for an interview. And then right now, we were doing all virtual interviews you know, because of uh, the COVID-19 crisis. Yeah. So we had a lot of virtual interviews that we conducted. And a lot of students were even sharing their portfolios online. You know, They were at the comfort of their own houses. They were showing me sketchbooks and you know blogs and everything that they were doing so yeah so we encourage great and of course obviously since we're mm -hmm. looking at at, at uh, the current scenario that it is are you is your campus looking at opening up or are you looking at still having some classes online as the terms open up so we're we're pretty much a very futuristic uh, college so we started doing online classes a long time back uh, so ever since uh, there was the <coughs> lockdown started online teaching uh, we had already been doing some of that but then uh, we majorly took the entire platform virtually and yeah. then we conducted even virtual examinations this time um so that was uh, quite something that was fun but yeah yeah no that's great that's great so yeah. you're keeping up with what what the trends are outside of india in the sense of being right. able to so we're doing certification courses we're doing virtual classes uh, we're holding a couple of uh, counseling sessions, everything online now. So we're working virtually now. Brilliant. Um, Arushi actually has a really great question, which was, could you tell us the difference between creatively coached and creatively mentored? I think that's a that's a very good question. I'd, I'd also like to know. So right. uh, if you could tell us the so, difference. So all the, the niche schools, you know, uh, when you talk about <clears> the NICs and the NIDs and all, they want people who are creatively mentored and not coached. Because if you're coached, you start perceiving things, you know, like the, the way your coaching is telling you to perceive it, right? So yeah. you're told a certain concept and then you're asked to create things like that. But if you're creatively mentored, then your mind is let loose and it's your own thinking, your own thoughts, your own perception and your own creation. So it's important to be creatively mentored and not coached because a coach can always tell you, sun is you know round and it has rays coming out but a creative mentor will just ask you to imagine the sun and sun could be anything for you could be abstract could be anything so nice. we let the mind you know lose and we, we let them think for themselves so Great. Uh, so a lot of tie in of analytical thinking and just being able to you know uh, abstract approach it. thinking abstract uh, thinking yeah thinking in metaphors <clears throat> uh, 
you know, those those are the things that uh, any designer uh, needs. And uh, that is why it's very important to uh, to mentor our kids in that direction. I don't know, how can we do that? Like, how, how can students who are in 11th or 12th or probably younger who are looking to apply to such colleges or preparing for uh, entrance examinations, creative aptitudes, uh, you mentioned uh, keen eye for detail, right? So those, these different aptitudes, is there any way that they can prepare for it or uh, or is it just innate? It's, it's, it's actually a mindset. Um, so a lot of us, when you get into the national schools and all, um, a lot of us are, you know, like doodlers. We know that our copies are full of doodles and sketches and we just do it because we love to do it. It's not because somebody has coached us to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, so our drawings are very, very original. Uh, you know, we, we look for originality. We look for things which are out of the box, uh, which we don't see everywhere else, you know. So learning shading, learning drawing, learning composition is very easy. Everybody can do that. Um, but how how innovative you are within that space do you really like what you do or are you just doing it because for your class is very very mm. important that's why i said creative mentoring is very important and creative coaching um so you can you can do one thing like what all of us um, you know probably would say is um read a lot see a lot of films uh, draw a lot if you like to draw and um, take, you know, uh, for, for the students, you can take in certification courses if you like. So if you like, if you say, if you like films or if you like animation, do a little certification course just to see what the thing is, you know. Yeah. Um, so it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't give you exactly the entire curriculum, but it gives you an introduction of what things are. Yeah. Uh, so within that space, then you can learn and then you can know really if, if you have an aptitude for that, if you really want to do it. Oh, wonderful! I think both of us smiled and laughed because you you got us both. The... Yeah, you you said read a lot and watch a lot of movies. So you got me movie. with read a lot, and you got him with watch a lot of movies. So I think both of us, Atin, can apply to JLU for sure <laughs> <laughs> to the to the design. Like, I, think I think we'll both make it. So. <laughs> we, we welcome all uh, learners from all age groups. So that's the way it should yeah. be. That's the yeah. way. I was be. thinking more in the lines like student telling students over here that you should watch movies. Listen, I'm going to tell them to please read more. You tell them to watch movies. I think we should tell movies, them to do both. Yeah, both. We, do, we tell them to do both. So great. That's and wonderful. Like, the one thing is there that because, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> a lot of people can read and watch a lot of movies. But if you know, if you really know what your area is of area of interest is, um, and it takes a while to know that, then you should do a little certification just to understand, um, you know, the nitty gritties of that area. And then, then pursue a course if you really like it. So like creative strategies, if there's a new course on that, or um, like I said, screenwriting and film appreciation, do those kind of courses and see if your aptitude lies there. So if you're looking at like even courses, uh, so it's a, um... Uh, so if you're looking at the short term courses, one that gives you a little bit of an inkling, but even if there, uh, would you recommend watching? Like, so, for example, if it's a design student who's coming in for um, let's take the most commonly uh, associated areas, so like say fashion design or if they're coming in for animation or something, um, do you in the interview process also ask them about what knowledge they may have about that area? Like, do you know the different designers or maybe about a, yeah, yeah, a type of animation or something? because that's that's like a given suppose you like animation you have to see a couple of movies right that's how you like yeah. animation so you're gonna ask them what do you really like in the film what about the characters um did you take the time to understand who the director is uh, mm -hmm. what is the style that they followed within the animation space do you have any favorites um and uh, you know what what do you like in the story what do you like in the narrative so those are the things which are very, very important for anybody studying any discipline that is. If you're doing graphic design, I would really like to ask the person, so is there any campaign or anything that you've seen which has moved you? you know? yeah. So you've got to ask them those things or, or any craft that you've seen. If you come across anything that you've seen, any painting, any craft uh, that you think is very uh, interesting and you would like to talk about that. Uh, so you have to gauge their interest first uh, if if they really are into the thing that they're looking for. Because right now, with all this information clutter around, mm -hmm. um, we have to gauge their strength, uh, yeah. whether or not they actually are a fit uh, for the course. 
So if they're watching uh, documentaries about design, they're finding out about uh, they, they're demonstrating a passion for that area that is also right. being supplemented with knowledge, then that obviously helps them become right. a stronger candidate. So like for the UX design, uh, we had students who were, uh, they were already so much into the, the field that they told me these are the kind of apps I like. And this is because I, I like them because they solve this problem for me. Mm -hmm. And it's using this kind of design thinking. And I was very impressed. I was like, OK, you, you've you come with a prior knowledge of this. Um, so uh, yeah, with, with the new students that we see, and especially with all these futuristic disciplines, um, they come in with so much knowledge already. It's very, very interesting to see that. Wonderful. That's that's really great. And and uh, one of the questions that was there that, that's going to test, I'm going to take over from Atin for a second. So what are the kind of industries that students uh, from JLU get placed in uh, for the most part, whether it's journalism, um, whether it's the animation or design areas, are there some companies or uh, some people who come in for placements uh, what, or what industries pick them up actually? Um, so there, uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, um, industries who come into JLU. You have uh, within the journalism space, like I showed you, there was Ogilvy, um, you know, some of our students were placed there. Then there was uh, CNN, IDN. Um, then uh, News 18, all those places. Uh, within, um, say, animation and VFX, uh, a lot of students get placed in the e-learning space. Nice. Uh, or, or the VFX industry, like Prime Focus and all of those, uh, you know, places where they do, uh, you know, animation series and all of those things. Um, then we also have some students who get uh, placed in production houses, like Red Chili Productions, um, Dreamcatchers, all of those. Um, then uh, within the design space, uh, UX design, uh, ImagineX, because we have a tie up with ImagineXP, um, so they can get into the app development space. Yeah. Uh, they can get into, you know, uh, UX for healthcare, uh, UX for uh, banking. Um, so uh, a lot of different fields open up by the end of the courses. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So there's a lot of um, industry interaction, a lot of really great companies, a lot of great industries coming in. That's wonderful, great. Um, so I, uh, I think anything else you wanted to add or any question that you thought that we've missed out? Uh, no, ma'am, I just, I, you've covered my questions. Uh, anything that ma'am you would like to add or uh, you think that, you know, we should have probably uh, thought about? We basically tried to cover as much as we, uh, I, I had basic questions about how can students prepare because when we deal with students, that's what they ask us, you know, like, okay, so uh, will I have to write an exam or is it merit based? So as soon as it's an exam entrance based thing, the first question is how do I prepare for it? Like, uh, should I join have, coaching classes? Have, should I? Um, yeah, yeah. I think we have cut off marks. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not that we're taking um, kids from all uh, percentage areas. We do have cut off marks for different uh, schools. It's different. Um, so last time it was like about 60%, 70%. So it depends, you know, but right now it's kind of different, you know, with the admission policies. Um, so we have that. But the interview is the most important thing that you're going to face. So right. whatever that, that you do, um, ensure that if you keep like a, a digital portfolio is better. But if you do have like a physical portfolio, that also Old works school. with the interview. And right. um, you can uh, you can then talk to your evaluator and the more work that you show because in designing you know everything is so visual you can talk mm. about certain things exactly. but if there is absolutely nothing to visually aid that then there's a problem so uh, if you show those things within your interview and uh, when your examiner is talking to you then it, that really really helps and uh, uh, we we're very happy to sort of get students from different streams with a lot of innovative ideas so we just look for that, you know, um, whether it, earlier it was like you give them an entrance exam paper and let them write their ideas, but you can even gauge that when you're interviewing them. So, so ma'am, when you say uh, 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 the first thing that you said about uh, marks, right? So cutoff marks, those cutoff marks are eligibility criteria for uh, like that an eligibility criteria for the entrance or are they the eligibility criteria for the entrance test? For the entries. For the entries. All right. Yeah. Okay, that's great. All right. Great. Um, I've been seeing a lot of questions fly by on what kind of book should we read? Is there a particular genre? So I would like to be able to point out here that read as much as you can and as widely as you can, uh, from graphic novels to horror stories to love stories to 
um, anything that you like that in, that interests you, please read that. Um, not only will it help you be able to look at admissions, it will also help you with building communication skills. It helps you build your perspective. You get to learn about the world from different viewpoints. And that's an important thing for you to do as well. And the same when it comes to movies, uh, watch as many different types. So from documentaries to comedies, to animation, to um, look at the ones that win Oscars, the short films, watch, watch all of those. You'll get to be able to understand the craft so much better. Um, and in, there are some amazing short animation movies that have won really great awards um, that have put very hard hitting, very, very relevant uh, points out there today and, and discussion areas. So um, that's, that's, those are elements that you, you, you do want to be able to look at. So um, um, also, yeah. I would like to add, you can write, you know, so, you know, blog writing or, or doing your own blogs is very, very important now. So. If you feel about a certain issue, start writing a blog, you know. So a lot of questions are there, ma'am. People asking, what is a blog? What do you mean by blogging? Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, a blog is basically your thoughts on a certain issue. And you basically try to post an article or your viewpoint about that. Um, it's supposed to be an original piece of work. It's not plagiarized. So, uh, <laughs> so yes, so that's. If you feel like you have um, any kind of ideas about something which is going on in the world or something that you want to discuss, whether it's a movie, whether it's politics, whether it's, um, you know, creativity, anything that you want to write about, anything you feel strongly about, whether it's a book review, I don't know, whether it's a movie review. So you start posting your thoughts on that, which are very original thoughts, which people otherwise they haven't posted it anywhere. Um, and then you can create your own blog site. You can put put in those articles there. Also, there's something called a vlog, which is a video blog. So you right. you actually um, describe you know different things, different events which are happening, and then you put it in a very video kind of format, and then you put that in, post that, in, and then you have comments from different people, and then you um, reply to those and uh, stay safe at the same time. But yeah, you can. Yeah. Certainly, yeah. Social media is in, in, when you're putting yourself out there, you need to be able to be right, careful. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah, when it comes to what um, uh, what platform, there are a lot of different platforms that will allow you to be able to create blogs. A lot of free platforms. So even right. if you if you do a quick search for blogging platforms, it will give you a lot of options. Areas like WordPress, etc. Um, those are all available, and and you know you can you can start writing and expressing your ideas. Your blog could even be a collection of your poetry. It could be a collection of your ideas. It could be short stories. It could be anything. Um, and yeah. it's just um, um, I mean, primarily. I think, uh, yeah. And, and I think even sketching is a very important component. So, you know, like I know so many people who've gotten into design and films and everything who love to sketch. So um, it's, it's something, it's like a skill that you have to build for yourself. So sit down whenever, whatever you see, um, you know, if you're, if you're somewhere in some space, carry a diary helps a lot. Don't carry an iPad, just carry your diary with a pen and just sketch whenever you find the time. Um, try to not copy any work. So they say, look at a landscape and copy the landscape or look at a portrait and copy the portrait. Don't copy any work. Hmm. Create your own original pieces. Um, if you like caricature, you can do that. Uh, if you like um, any any kind of method um, that you, you want to try, you can you can try those. Um, and keep keep a portfolio of that. So keep keep a scanned, uh, you know, picture of that, and then make either a digital portfolio or or keep like a physical portfolio, so that whenever you are applying for any entrance or or, or doing some kind of a showcase of your work, then it's uh, accessible to everybody. Yeah, and I mean, as as an HR person, I can tell you whether you choose to be able to have your portfolio in. Uh, yes, you can do calligraphy for sure, Adityaraj. Um, if you can put your portfolio there in case you're applying for um, a job that's unrelated to design also, but you have your creative work somewhere, uh, it also gives a really great insight into to who you are as a person apart from what you just show on the resume. So it's a great way for somebody to get to know you as well. So, yeah, great. Um, so uh, for the whole team, um, I hope I'm still audible because everybody, yeah, okay, great. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll, we'll wind it down. And uh, Nupur, thank you so much. Uh, you gave us some very practical My advice. Pleasure. My and, pleasure. And been, it was uh, great interacting with you, really, because I think just practical advice is what makes the most difference. And because you bring such rich industry experience, you were able to give us such practical inputs and knowledge on 
what students need to work on and what they need to be able to do. Um, I know there are a lot of questions that uh, students ask and some of them that have been said privately, which we've not been able to answer for you. Please, please send your questions to hello at mindler.com and we will answer that for you. We want to be able to have you get that data and information. Um, you're welcome to be able to please go to the Mindler website and look at information there as well. And also please go and visit the JLU website to get more information about uh, Jagdan Lake University and be able to see what courses they have. I'm looking through a, a very detailed area there. Just one more information. Yeah. So we have a career assessment test that you can take. Um, so when you go to the Jagdan website, maybe I can um, send you the link. So um, you can go and take a free career assessment test. So uh, if you want to check your aptitude or something, then you can go ahead and use that tool. It's available to everybody for free. Great. And since all of the students who've logged on here have used the Mindler uh, assessment as well, and you know that Mindler can help you with both the assessment and understanding your career choices as well, um, then you know that having both those pieces of information will just help you. Uh, you get your uh, a very detailed report with the Mindler assessment as well, and you end up with your five career matches, and you can then go ahead and have a look at um, how that matches up with what you can do at JLU as well. So both those elements work there. But please make sure that you are, uh, you know, using the Mindler platform. You're making an, uh, you know, an, a very objective choice and an informed choice about your career. Uh, you're using the blogs. You're using the career library um, in case you would like to be able to connect for individual sessions. Uh, you need to, you can get in touch with us at Hello at Mindler, and we'd be happy to do that for you as well. Uh, over there. Atin, have I missed out any part or have I covered all elements? You've covered more than everything. <laughs> That's really great. Nupur you know, has been a real good help, like a practical exposure to what we should be looking at. I think more than uh, anyone, the students have benefited a lot from this. Absolutely. I can see a lot of comments in that. Thanks yeah. a lot, ma'am, for that. Yes. So keep your observation skills going. All three areas are strongly connected and work on your reading and for Atin's sake, work on your watching movies. <laughs> and we make sure everybody builds on their creativity and creative thought. Everybody, please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and your families. And um, we will see you for the next webinar and connect with you then. Uh, thank you so much again, Nupur. Appreciate your being here. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Um, feel, everybody else, feel free to reach out to us at hello at mindler.com and we'd be happy to answer the rest of your questions. Okay. All of you take care of yourselves. Thank you. Thanks, Nupur. Thank you. Thanks, Athen. Thank you, ma'am.